My voice life touch needed remote control. Here's my voice life touch, and here is my homebrew switch three. I'm going to connect them together using a standard stereo cable, sometimes called a TRS cable, because it has a tip, a ring, and a sleeve. First thing I'm going to do is connect one end of the TRS cable to the foot switch jack in the back of the voice light touch. And I'm going to connect the other end to the homebrew switch three. Now let's see how this works. The first switch is for harmony, second switch is for favorites, and the third switch is for looping. That's the option I selected. So let's see how it works. Let's watch the harmony. So when we press the first switch, harmony goes on and off. Notice we're at favorite five, so when we press the second switch, we loop over to favorite one. And finally, when we press the third switch, play comes on, then record, then they all go off. And if I'm in the play mode and record mode, and I hold this, we get the undo function. So if this interests you, let's see how you can build a homebrew Switch 3 for yourself. So I decided to make my own case, and I used all quarter inch MDF, and this is the bottom. This is 5 inches by 9 and a half inches, and again it's quarter inch stock. Then I cut a side piece out, and what I did was I took a 2 inch by 5 inch piece and I cut it at a 10 degree angle, like that. And I'm keeping this piece that will help us in the glue up, before, and then I'll, I'll throw it away. Here's the other end, and you notice there's a 3 8 inch hole here, and on the back the hole is countersunk. And the reason I did that was so that I could take the stereo jack, put it through, and then it'll stick out the other end and I can screw it on. Now, I have the back and the front. The back is half inch stock and it's two inches high and nine inches long. I just happen to have some half inch, but if you don't, you can do what I did on the smaller piece and take two quarter inch pieces and glue them together and this is about one and an eighth high and again this is cut at a ten degree angle nine inches long as is this one it's cut at a ten degree angle okay. and finally we have the top the top's a little larger than the bottom it's five and an eighth by nine and a half and you'll notice that the two angles I have two ten degree angles cut on this one. Now we're going to start the assembly process by doing the glue up and I'm going to paste some glue here like that. Spread it out and put this on here. In order for this to set I'm going to have to clamp it. The clamp is flat and this is at an angle. So we take that piece that we had and we put it here like this. We line everything up and then we use the clamp. Now we'll let this dry for about a half an hour. Now the sides have dried and I've clamped the front on down. Now let's do this do the back. We're going to spread the glue. Make sure we put it right. It's got to go in like this. And put it in. Pull it down like that. And we're going to let that dry again for another half hour. Now with all the clamps off, you can take a look. What we have is a nice case. And we, all we have to do now is put the bottom on, like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to drill some holes and put four screws in. Now I've drilled four clearance holes, 
about an inch or so from the end and a quarter inch in and those holes allow the screw to go right through. Now I'm going to drill pilot holes on the bottom here. I'm going to line this up and just drill four pilot holes. Okay, pilot holes are done. Now I want to use a half inch screw and this is already a quarter of an inch so this is not going to bite in too much. So what I'm going to do is countersink these holes. Now that the holes are countersunk, you can see we get more and these are about essentially flush. Now, I'm going to pre-screw in the screws because with MDF, if you don't do that, the MDF will split. So I'm going to clamp this so that it doesn't spread. I'm going to take my screw there we go so now I'm ready to screw the bottom in here we go and now that's the bottom so our case is all finished So I'm done. I finished. Here's the box. I've rounded the front and the back and smoothed everything out. And the last thing I have to do is make three holes for the push button switches that are going to go in here. Now the last step was to drill three holes. I've drilled them up around two inches. This one's centered and each one of these is three and a half inches from the center. We paint this all up next, and then we'll mount the three switches, the stereo uh, GRS jack, and then do the wiring, and we'll be ready to go. So here's the unit with the switches installed and the box finished. I've also installed the stereo TRS jack, and I finished the bottom as well. I had to enlarge the hole from a half inch to a little larger to fit this in, but I just did that with a file. Now, I've already done the wiring, but before I go over that, I want to show you a little drawing here. This is the actual schematic diagram, and here's the TRS jack, and you notice it has a tip, a ring, and a sleeve. The tip goes to switch one directly, the ring goes to switch two directly, and all three switches have a common connection to the sleeve. Switch three is connected to both the tip and the ring through a diode, which only allows the current to flow in one direction. So when I push switch three, both the tip, the ring, and the sleeve are all connected together. When I push switch two, only the ring and the sleeve are connected together and when I push switch one only the tip and the sleeve are connected together. Now in order to wire that I've created a little wiring diagram which you see here. And you notice this TRS jack has a long contact and a, sh and a short contact. Here's the long contact and here's the short contact and when you look at the sideways you can see that's longer than that. Then it has four lugs that you can connect the wire to. One, two, three, four. And as you see I've shown one, two, three, four. The one between the short and the longer contact is the sleeve. The next one is the tip. The next one is not used in this application and the last one is the ring. So the sleeve goes to all three switches, one, two, three. The tip goes directly to switch one. The ring goes directly to switch two. And switch three is connected to both switches one and two through a diode, here and here. And you notice there's a black marker on the diode. That shows which way the current should flow. Now let's look and see how it looks in 
actual doing it. Here we are. There's the TRS jack. We have a wire coming from the sleeve going to the three switches. We have a wire from the tip going directly to switch one. We have a wire from the ring going directly to switch two. And then we have the diode with its marker there connected by a wire to switch three and we have the diode with its marker there also connected by a wire to switch three. And that is it. That's the totality of which you would get effectively in the TC Helicon S3 switch. My boss left touch Needed remote control Needed a switch three, but I didn't have the dough. So I got me some parts, and I made one, don't you know? Now my homebrew switch three is with me whenever I play a show. Homebrew switch three, making it easy. Homebrew switch three, you make it for a small fee. Homebrew Switch 3 Homebrew Switch 3